Hi right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Fishing with Timmy Turtle. Uh, I've just started doing a bit of traveling and bought a whole heap of expensive rods and my motor and battery and stuff are actually rolling around and crushing eyelets. So I decided to make a, a rod rack for the back of my car. So I'm gonna do a DIY video on how to build a rod rack. Hopefully it's better than my last DIY video. I realized I explained nothing in that. So we're gonna give this one a crack and talk you through it. Things you'll need is a length of wood, it's 50 mil by 12 mil and you buy it in a 2.4 meter length. So if you're American viewers, it's two inch by half inch by eight foot, I think. You'll need a saw, uh, four of those little screws. Two of them are already in the roof, so I've only got two. Packet of those screws. I'll leave a link in the description of what size they are. The, a tape measure, screwdriver, a drill with Phillip heads for, the, for your two screws. Packet of rubber bands. Packet of these rod clips, you buy them off eBay for, I think it's $7 for a packet of 20. I'm gonna leave a link to the description of where I bought mine from. And a pen. Let's get started. So all my rods are split grips. I reckon they're a more well-balanced rod and they're lighter. So you wanna work out where you want your, your clips to sit. Because mine is split grip, I'm gonna have my first lot of rod racks really close to the back. So work out where you wanna put your two things. So if you, if you don't have split grips, these clips probably won't fit the back of it. So you might have to get bigger clips or move your struts further forward so you can clip them on this part of the rod. So mine, mine's gonna be placed really far at the back. So measure up where you want it. Measure the width of the back of your car where you've marked out where you want your two, two things. And then what I did after that, 1100 actually added two centimeters just because you want to wedge it up on top of this lip here measure both sides from there to there and then i actually added two centimeters just so you can push it and wedge it right up on top there all right once you've worked out your measurement mark it on your board it was 11 1100 plus your yeah, two extra centimeters cut it longer the first time and if it doesn't wedge properly then cut it a little bit shorter it doesn't have to be exact Mark your line. Next step, grab your saw. I realize this is a garden saw, but this is all I have, so this is what I'm using. Done. So once you've got it all measured, check if it fits. There you go, look at that. Ah, oh, sensational. Fits just up on those clips there like that. So you really don't need to put screws in it. That's pretty sturdy. I will be putting screws in it though, just to make it permanent. Once we got that all fitted up, the next thing we do is we measure out. I put my clips, they come with a pack of 20. I actually only put nine in a row. So the next thing I did was measured it out. Put one every 100 mil or every four inches. For you Australian viewers, I put one every, every 10. 10 centimeters or 100 mil. So there's nine. Once you've got that all marked down, next step, grab your clips, chuck them all, uh, just do one at a time. Make sure they're facing this way, don't put them on the wrong way. Grab two of your little screws that you pick up from my to 10. I'll put the sizes in the description, but they're only, they're only small. I think they're 12 mil long, little Phillips head. Right, so once you've got it all marked out, put your clip down on top of your wood, grab your Phillips head, grab your little screw, chuck that in there and start screwing. Right, one screw in. You wanna put two screws per clip. They got two little holes in them. You can use a drill, but I didn't have a Phillips head small enough for these little screws, so I just hand twirl them in. This is hardwood, you probably use pine. Two screws in that, and you wanna do that on every mark of your wood until you have something that looks like this. That took me like 30 minutes, I reckon. Once you've got it all set, you wanna fix that to your top of your car, so. Push that up and in. Slide that along to, to the position you want it. Make sure this is straight, so push that in a bit more. Oh, too far. 80 mil, that's a bit far. 80 mil, there you go, it doesn't have to be exact. So once that's in there like that, you should probably note that I bought this car for $2,000. Doesn't plan to do some, some renos to it. I don't mind putting screws into the roof, but if you don't like doing this, That'll hold in there fine with a number of rods on it, but just to make it permanent, grab your drill. There we go, one and two. These are 20, 25 mil long screws. Make sure you don't get screws that are long enough to go through the roof of your car, otherwise you might have some leaking issues. 
There we go. Back one done. And I've done the same to the front, except I've switched it over so the, the knuckles are on top of the on top of the board. This is the front one. I've already done this because I've already done some trips with it in my car, so I didn't want to unscrew it. But I put the knuckles on top of the board just so I don't have to put rubber bands around them to hold to hold it in when you're traveling. So you don't want the rods popping out while you're going over speed bumps. So I've put this on top and I'll show you how to put the rods in. So you just slide your rod along the roof till you get to the front, clip that in, clip that in the back. There's one rod in. Then what you do, grab your rubber band, run your finger once, run your finger twice, and just to stop it dropping out while you're on the highway, just chuck that rubber band around there like that, just to hold it in. There you go, nice rod rack for the roof of your car. I'll chuck in all my rods, show you what it looks like. guys all finished nice rod holder for the roof of your car We've got nine rods up there can take one more and you could probably squeeze some more in there as well got rod armors on all my rods just to protect them sometimes if you've got reels on them they swivel while they're driving so the last thing you want is it scratching thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed hope i explained it all better than my last diy video make sure to hit the like button if you like the idea see you next episode